welcome back to our Express Leo Awards special. The Leos celebrate the BC film and television industry, the writers, the creators, the directors, the actors, a year of accomplishments on big and small screens. Of course, it's also an accomplishment to have this event run smoothly, even if it doesn't always seem that way behind a curtain. A star-studded red carpet and award show that showcases BC's film and television talent. It's hard to believe the Leo Award started just 13 years ago. It's changed dramatically because when it first started, of course, uh, it was a lot smaller. Uh, we did not have a red carpet. Uh, now we have the largest red carpet in Western Canada. As the show has grown, so has the Leo's crew. The team to put this together is probably 40 to 50 people. Producers to graphic designers to band members in the orchestra. The band for the Leo Awards are the best in the biz. This is their first and only rehearsal. It's about five hours to the show and they're about to start the rehearsal. Number 32 is relabeled 34. What, what's actually interesting is that they have all the different music for all the different nominees. And so when the winner is announced, then the conductor will turn to each of the, to all the musicians and go, okay, play number three, because number three won. What a big day of preparation. What goes into a show like this? Well, what you see here is the tip of the iceberg. It takes about a month of planning to coordinate. Basically, we have 1,200 people coming for dinner. But before the stars sit down to eat, they'll hit the red carpet. And that's where they'll meet enthusiastic volunteer Sarah Karalekli. Mm, Ratner, 435. Yeah, probably in front. I sign people in for the red carpet. I just checked in Bed Ratner's wife. He's nominated for an award for fathers and sons. And we have a bunch of actors coming in from like Christopher Heiderhal. Most people might know him from the Volturi, you know, the whole Twilight saga. Yeah. From here, the Leo nominees and presenters wait to be whisked off to the red carpet. But they don't have far to go. You see, the red carpet is just on the other side of the Hotel Vancouver. A lot of people don't know, but it's actually all staged. And, and when they arrive on the other side, the media will then know who's coming. Sean, what are you doing at the Leo's? I'm responsible for uh, getting the nominees into their uh, rival cars and sending them over to the uh, red carpet area. I was pretty excited to meet uh, Jennifer Spence, uh, nominated for Best Actress. Uh, I, was, I was really proud of her work on, uh, on uh, Stargate Universe. When the stars arrive on the red carpet, they'll get their picture snapped by volunteer photographer Samira Safai. Uh, I'm taking photos of the Leo's Award and it's very exciting. It's a wonderful place for fashion photography and lots of colors, lovely dresses. It's amazing to be here. Now, any behind the scenes tricks or secrets that you want to share with us that go on before the show? Uh, well, we all rehearse in our underwear. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, honestly, it's, it's really, um, it's a pretty simple thing that we do. We've sold out every event we've ever hosted, which says to us that we're doing something right. People want to come, they want to celebrate. And they'll do it all again next year with a new cast and new costumes for the same big celebration. I'm Bianca Salterbeck in Vancouver with The Express. The BC film and television industry creates more than 15,000 jobs and generates more than 1 billion Canadian in economic activity. It also gives us TV junkies lots of great stuff to watch, like a cartoon where the bad guys are the heroes, one that's up for five Leo Awards this year. And they've got a whole generation of kids cheering for the bad guys. What a great morning for evil! <laughs> It's to try and inject, in this case, evil into their little minds and, uh, and ensure that they become great supervillains when they grow up. Um, or maybe incompetent ones, I'm not sure. So. It's called the League of Super Evil or Lose, a group of evildoers plotting to take over the neighborhood using their not so super powers. <laughs> They're not truly evil, and there's, it's not when you're watching it, they won't say, oh, we're you know, promoting evil characters. It's actually showing how, how bad they are at being evil, and how. So it's, it's quite interesting in that way. To see actually a, a bunch of cartoons come up, so I have the idea of focusing on the supervillain. Uh, I think that proves that you know, kids do like the idea of rooting for the bad guy. 
Since it first went to air in 2009, Lose has amassed legions of little followers in 23 countries. Here at Nerdcore, where the animation is produced, the show's more than 80 artists, writers, and engineers have no intention of slowing down. The script process alone takes easily 9 to 11 weeks. We need to go start storyboarding it, then we go voice recording, where we have a really amazing voice actors crew. Then we go to animation, and we produce two 10 and a half minute shows in six weeks. And that's the thing, what makes it incredible is that it, we do it so fast, yet it's a really good product. So good, the show just earned three Leo Awards, including Best Animation Series. That's what our job is, you know, to be kids that uh, come to work every day and sort of put on our little eight-year-old caps and sort of figure out what kids would want to see and what the kid in us would want to see, and that's what we kind of uh, turned into a business, so, which isn't, you know, isn't really work. Lots of fun. Luz is now in its third season of production, and with millions of kids in its evil empire, the show is taking over, something Voltar and his cronies can never do. No, don't touch that! I'm Tim Chung in Vancouver for The Express. League of Super Evil can be seen on Saturday mornings on YTV. You're watching our Express Red Carpet Leo Awards special, and we have more from the carpet, plus a sit-down with director Carl Basai, screenwriter Dennis Foon, and these moments on stage. First of all, I'd like to thank the members of the jury for this award. Much appreciated. Which is a mighty appreciation. I'd also like to acknowledge the other members in this category. Uh, certainly, the competition was very tough, and... Just want to acknowledge that everybody within this category is trying to raise the bar for the documentary and production in this country. Funny story about this job. Uh, I was going to the audition. My best friend Ben Cotton tells me that there's no chance in hell I'm going to book this job. So I have to thank him for knowing me so well that this month before I went into that audition. It helped. Um, I'd like to thank the Leos and the Leo jury for their support. I'd like to congratulate the uh, other nominees. Wow. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the Leo team. Um, this award means a lot to me. It means a lot to be recognized, and uh, working on Life Unexpected was a wonderful show to be part of. It actually gave a voice to foster children in their plight. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by... Makeup services for Shaw TV, provided by Beauty Mark. Welcome back to our Express Leo Awards special. From standing ovations at the Cannes Film Festival to nominations at this year's Leo Awards, the winner for Best Screenwriting in a Feature-Length Drama has had a pretty awesome year. And it's hard to believe it all started from a visit to a small rural village in South Africa. For local screenwriter Dennis Foon, this is where the magic happens. In his Vancouver office, he's writing a new film, but audiences around the world are celebrating his last achievement. Life Above All is Foon's 2010 film about a young girl enduring her troubled family life in South Africa. The film has garnered him international attention, amazing reviews by critics, and now a Leo Award for Best Screenplay. We went up there and went to South Africa and met with all kinds of people. We made some very key decisions with that film, which one of them was that we wanted it to be as visceral and real as possible. We lowered the ages of the characters to reflect much more the South African reality. We really centered it in South Africa. The novel wasn't based in South Africa, but that was for a variety of reasons. The biggest decision in the way that we made was to do it in the language of this small village in the north of South Africa because we really wanted it to be, feel as visceral as possible and completely real. John, 
One of the most important aspects of the film is how Foon speaks to the AIDS epidemic in Africa. We went to an AIDS hospital and I, one of the most like extraordinary moments for me in that whole trip was going into this hospital and there was this woman who was skeletal. I mean, completely bone thin. She was ravaged by AIDS. She looked at me, and I told her what we were doing. I said, I, you know, I, in a way, I, I could sort of asked her permission if it was okay if, if I could reflect that experience. I mean, she was specific, but it's, it's the general experience. And, and she said, tell my story. Tell the world what's happening here. Life Above All gave Foon an entry into the prestigious Cannes Film Festival. We were an official selection. We were in, um, uh, you know, this incredible competition. We got a 10-minute standing ovation. People were like on their feet, crying and clapping. A thousand people in this theater. Uh, it was absolutely uh, unnerving. One of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. An experience that also gave him praise from one of the most respected men in film, Roger Ebert. This woman said to me, "My husband wants to congratulate you." And I looked, and it was this guy, and he was basically missing his lower jaw. He went like this, and it was Roger Ebert. It's obvious how Foon's films have touched audiences by looking at the number of awards that line his office walls. And now, thanks to his compelling South African story, Foon will have to make room for a shiny new Leo and many more to come. I'm Mana Mansour in Vancouver for The Express. You can head to the website to find out where you can see life above all in theaters. Now coming up on our Leo Awards special, we'll be sitting down with director Carl Basad to talk about his two competing nominations. Not to talk about who he's wearing, because we have plenty of that from right here on the red carpet. Do you like the jacket? Well, I'm, I'm doing a project right now and I had to wear this in the project and I said, may I take this for the Leos? It's so unique and original and a bit of fun. I was lucky enough to be lent this, this lovely jumpsuit ensemble by Isma in Toronto. So I, I leave it up to all of the professionals, the hair, the makeup, the wardrobe, because I'm, I'm clueless. You know that I bought this about 45 minutes ago. You know that that's so, you know, it on. Out, of the, out of the box, just onto my body. Yeah. Can you tell us about your dress? Because I just, it's stunning. I love it. This is a Pam Baker design. Um, she's a uh, First Nations designer from Squamish Nation here in Vancouver. Um, touch of culture designs. I love her designs. They're all gorgeous like this. I'm wearing something extremely fashionable. Uh, I am dressed head to toe in uh, made to measure Airman Gildo Zegna suit. I had made in Italy and put together in the Swiss Alps. I want you to say that five times fast, can you? I had this made to measure by Airman Gildo Zegna. I don't remember what I said. I'm high. <laughs> My mom made this dress. We started with the crinoline and then we went from there. So I don't, I, and she made it in Winnipeg and mailed it here, not one fitting. Oh my gosh, I love that. Not one fitting. My two favorite things I've heard so far on the red carpet, she mailed it here and we started with the crinoline. <laughs> you picked this out yourself this time? Yeah, I did. I asked my mom if it looked good and then she said, okay, yeah, sure. Oh, you gave props to the mom. You know, all the girls out there just went, oh, it's so cute. You think? Yeah. If we're going to talk fashion on the red carpet, then we kind of have to talk to the fashion queens themselves. Ladies, what do you think of this year's red carpet? Well, this year's red carpet is really, really big. I mean, this is the Leos in the finest form we've ever seen it. You look amazing, by the way. Oh, thank yeah. you. I'm going to have one on either arm for the rest of the show. <laughs> and we just do this. This is that? Yeah. Aww. <laughs> The red carpet glitz and glamour are part of the excitement for the awards show, but the Leos are really about celebrating talent. Carl Besides, a Vancouver-based film director who's nominated for two Leos this year, both feature-length films. As we'll see in this next story, the two films are very different, and it's hard to have your two babies judged against each other. It's weird. 93, right? Yeah, it should be 93, but it's 92. It's called Repeaters and is one of two films by director Carl Basai nominated for this year's Leo Awards. There has grown in the in you know over the past 20 years a significant independent film and television community. Um, that's where I live and work. And so, you know, Leo Awards which celebrate that community and, and you know it's really a, it's really about community acknowledgement. You know, I think that's an important idea. You know, it's not the Academy Awards. But it's our Academy Awards in a sense, and I, and I think that, you know, this is the award show that celebrates the people who create original material in this province. Repeaters sets its story in a time frame of a day lived over and over again. 
you've got three basically drug addicts who, who use the day, the repeating day, to get into mayhem. And then two of them start to realize there's a moral implication. And that's what I loved about the script. I love this idea that the, that the setup would give you an opportunity for, to examine a moral choice. I mean, if you have no laws preventing you from you know, doing this or doing that, would you do it? Carl Besai's comedy Fathers and Sons is another Leo nominee and a movie that was made not with a formal script, but by improvisation. Stop it right now, Bernie, Bernie. This is your father. This is your son. It's four central stories of four sort of pairings of father and son. Um, those four stories uh, play independently of one another, but are obviously connected thematically. So you, you literally drop in to the world of each of these kind of pairings and you get a sense of what the different dynamics are between a father and his son. I think directing is about knowing how to listen. And that's one of the reasons why I started to work on these improvised movies. So my trilogy, which is Mothers and Daughters, Fathers and Sons, and the new one coming out this year, which is Sisters and Brothers, these films are unscripted movies. So I got away from a script so I could work collaboratively with a cast. We could develop story ideas together. And then we go into live environments with you know lo-fi cameras, and we make it up as we go along. And what it teaches me is to trust, you know, I have to trust the actor, because the actor is coming up with their own dialogue, there's nothing written down. But I also develop my listening skills, because I'm, they're relying on me to be the filter for their performance. There's no apologies between fathers and sons. And judging by this year's twin nominations, it's a job that Carl Vasai does very well. In Vancouver, I'm Kendall Harris for The Express. There are many people with those sons and daughters. Keep your eyes open for Carl's next project, Sisters and Brothers. Now that's it for our coverage of the 2011 Leo Awards. Congratulations to all of the nominees and the winners, and thanks to you for watching and supporting local talent.